Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So if you're familiar with my tutorials, then you know that I'm really big on workflow efficiency and keyboard shortcuts. But did you know that there's a couple of keyboard shortcuts in Studio One that are not listed in the keyboard shortcut menu? So it's pretty hard to find out about them unless you use the help info menu, which I'm going to show you in just a bit. And you might have missed these features before. So hopefully I'm going to show you one that's new to you. Here we go. So I'm in a production right here inside of Studio One. And um, this is a track I've done a while back, actually many years ago. Uh, and what I've done here, if you check out the master track, is I've automated the master fader just a tiny bit so that as we're going into the bridge, it takes out in total 1 dB. And um, then as we progress towards the chorus, that is slowly rising again to zero dB, which is where I usually want to have my master fader. And this just makes for this little bit of an extra push um, where it's necessary. Maybe I can demonstrate this to you really quickly. So here I'm taking out a little bit of the drive. I'm, you know, stepping off the gas pedal for a moment. Right, and as we're progressing, I'm actually raising the master level fader again. A little trick that I like to do from time to time. Right? You can clearly hear how that's building up momentum. Pulling that back. Right, and that just increases the level of punch a little bit. But I want to do that in very small increments. So the keyboard shortcut that I want to show you, that's not listed to my knowledge in the keyboard shortcuts, at least certainly not in the way you would expect it, is notch up, down, fine, which actually allows me in this case, if automation lanes and points are selected, to put the volume up and down in minus or plus 0.6 decibel increments. So especially when I'm not zoomed in and I'm in an overview mode like this, this is a very useful keyboard shortcut because then I can just make my selection like so and then notch the volume up and down, right? So this is super useful and this also works on channel faders. This works with clip gain automation and hopefully you're going to find this as useful as I do. The next keyboard shortcut I want to show you that is not really listed anywhere is shift plus enter to rename all events to the track name. So for example, let's say that I'm working on um, the base here, right? You can see all of these events have different names like 4, 9, 17. And that's just based on the different points in time at which I uh, rendered these. Uh, but I'd like that to be consistent in accordance to the name that I have here for the track. I would like all the events to be called base, right? So a quick way to do that is just double click the track as if you wanted to rename it normally. And then you just hit shift and enter. And as you can see, this will rename all of the events according to the track name. Uh, I could also uh, enter a new name like baseline rendered or something like that. And when I hit shift plus enter, you see that name has been transferred to all of the events. So you don't have to go in and change them one by one or select all of them, right click or anything like that. You can do this right away and very conveniently with shift plus enter. The next command is also not listed in the keyboard shortcuts menu, but it's very useful and it's called slip edit. Let me show you what that does. So you can select any event Right, And once you've done so, you can hold down Option and Command on a Mac, or that would be Alt and Control on Windows. And then you can move any waveform like that, which is very, very useful if you don't want to move the entire container, but you just want to move a specific waveform within that container to a different place. Especially useful if we you know, cut like this and then slip edit you can already see the massive benefits that this has over the classic method, which would be split and then moving like so. Especially if you do this several times in a row, this can save you a ton of time. 
If you want to find more of these commands, then make sure to check out the info view. That's the question mark icon here in the toolbar. And when you click on that, you get a context sensitive help that always highlights commands that are available for what you're currently doing, right? So this shows you the kind of keyboard shortcuts that you would usually miss when you just go via the keyboard shortcuts menu. Okay, with that mentioned, let's move on straight to the next one, which has to do with zooming. So I have an entire video on zooming. It's called Zoom Like a Boss. Um, yeah, that meme was kind of cool way back a couple of years ago. Um, but anyway, the tips are still very much relevant. And if you watch that video, then you know that I love Zoom Overview and Zoom to Selection because these allow me to just go in and very quickly go back to see the entire arrangement. But another method that is not listed in the keyboard shortcuts, but that is very effective, is the magnifying glass that you get when you hit Option and Shift on a Mac or Alt and Shift on Windows. And uh, basically this allows you to just hold Option and Shift and then drag Range like so. And once you're done, you can just click and go back to your previous zoom state, right? So let's assume that I wanted to work on the synthesizers here in the chorus section. I can just hold down Option and Shift or that would be Alt and Shift on Windows, draw my range and do all my edits, right? Everything I need to do. And once I'm done here, I can just hold these and click to go back to the previous zoom state. I actually know quite a few producers who use just this command for all of their zooming inside of Studio One. So if you're looking for a better way to navigate in Zoom Studio One songs, then this might be what you're looking for. Hopefully I was able to show you at least one new shortcut that was not listed in the keyboard shortcuts menu, but that's definitely useful to know. And if you have any others that are your favorites, then please let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching.